So I have my color logo and it's already formatted because we brought the vector in to be eight by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. 350 is my preferred lab resolution, even though it's 50 pixels per inch higher than standard print resolution. And I can adjust all my settings here in a raster program like Photo P or Photoshop. And I can adjust the, uh, the outer glows. I can adjust the shadows, turn them on and off. I'm going to thin the drop shadow a little bit. It's a little bit strong. Thin the outer glow a little bit. It's a little bit strong. But the key is you want it to look good. If it's a logo, you want it to look good on multiple backgrounds. So on black, come on, show up. On white and on gray. And that means it's a really versatile logo. We're not going to print it with anything other than white, right? Like a solid white. So how do we make it print ready? Well, first we save it with all of its layers as our PSD. And this is now my color logo, assignment four. It would be okay if I saved over my black logo because my black logo is right there. All I have to do is turn these off to reveal my black logo. But now with my color logo, I'm gonna turn the white background on and I'm going to flatten it. This is to make it print ready. But before that, I have to submit it, right? So I can turn the background off and export it as a PNG. Because I haven't done that yet. I don't think I've done that yet. And then I can put it into the project as my PNG. I'm just going to move it from downloads in. Again, you can do it from Photo P or from <coughs> Photoshop. So now I have my three components for assignment four, my refined sketch, which is here, my black logo, and my color logo. And the logos are PNGs, so they are cut out, no background. Now I need to make print-ready files for my portfolio, right, for printing for the midterm. And I, I need three of them. If I want to print my color logo, I turn on the background from this PSD file. And I flatten it, layer flatten image, and then I immediately export it as a TIFF file. To do that in PhotoP, I have to go export, go to more, go to TIFF. I'm going to do that same thing through Photoshop really quick. Out of Photo P that goes to downloads. There it is. I'm going to change its name to PR dash color logo, mark it purple, and then I put it to my class Dropbox, my Dropbox folder, which I thought I still had open. Yes, I do. It's right here. So how do I do that? I just drag and drop it in into my folder. Remember, this folder is found under all files. Click on the first folder, scroll down, click on the first folder, flatten TIFF files to print, scroll down to your name, your section, and then drag your portfolio into it. Only flatten TIFF files, please, because they use the memory the best way. And we'll learn more about TIFF files and why we use those instead of JPEGs, instead of PNGs. All right. Let me do the exact same thing again in Photoshop. So I'm not going to save it flattened, right? I've already saved it as a PSD, so I'm just gonna, gonna close it without saving it. Because I've got my PSD. I've got my print ready one. I've got my PNGs, I'm good. Okay, now let's open it in Photoshop and do the same thing because it's almost identical. 
I can duplicate it. I can add color. I won't go through all that right now. But how do I make it print ready? Turn on the background. Layer flatten image. Make sure it's at the right size, which is 8 by 10 by 350 or 300 at minimum. And then say file save as. And then you can save it as a TIFF, a TIFF. Where do you save it? To the assignment or to your desktop, but make sure you put PR in front of it. Now, this is why I like showing you in Photoshop, because when you save a TIFF in Photoshop, it gives you this option. Do you want to compress it? And the answer is we always want to compress it using LZW. This is a form of lossless compression. It's a miracle of data science. So it won't ever lose any quality, but it will take up less space. That's why TIFF is an archive format. So now this print ready TIFF, this one right here that I just saved, is a better TIFF out of Photoshop than the one out of Photopea because this one took 39 megabytes and this one only takes 287 kilobytes. And they're both the same exact quality. So that's how good LZW compression is. We'll talk more about that when we're reviewing for the midterm. All right. Now I want to pick my other files to put into my folder for printing. I need three. You have to print one logo, either your color or your black and white logo. So I need two other assignments. So I go back into my files and I think, I liked my creature a lot. I want to print my creature. Or I think, I liked my creature scape a lot. Or I liked my animation a lot. What you would print from your animation is your refined storyboard. What's great about that is if you look at its image size, it's 30 by 40 by 100. If you uncheck resample and you make that 8 by 10, it will be larger than you need it to be. It will be 8 by 10.666, basically 8 by 10 and, and 2 thirds at 375 pixels per inch. That's good, as long as it's at least 8 by 10 by 300. You say, okay, I didn't even change anything. But then you are going to say layer, flatten image, and then file, save as a TIFF. And you save its name to have PR in front of it. And I would just save it to the desktop at this point. And then you always want LZW compression. So I now have my second print ready file. And I can go ahead and put that right into my folder. So I'm going to mark it purple. That's my next file. Now my third one might be a little trickier. Because let's say my third one isn't just floating on white space, like my creature, or like my logo, or like my two exercises. You could also print those for your midterm. I want to do assignment one. And assignment one, I'm going to open up my best, highest resolution file, which is going to be my PSD file. I'm going to open this up in Photop, but it'll be the same in Photoshop. It opens up. I want to print this whole thing, but I need to need to fit it onto an 8x10 window, right? So this is what you do. You go to your image size, and you see that it's larger than 8x10 here. Great. And you see that it's larger than 3x50. So what I'm going to do is go to my canvas size, and I'm going to increase the space on each side. You can do this in inches or in pixels, but let's do nice even numbers. I'm going to make it 20 by 13. Grow it from the middle. Remember, what is Photoshop good at? What is Photop good at? Growing things from the center for layout. When I do that, that happens. And that happened because of the crop issue. So what I need to do to make it print ready is I can crop 
But even if I crop in PhotoP, it's going to remember stuff on the outside. So if I increase the canvas size again to 20 by 14, it still shows stuff. So the only thing you can do to get it not to do that before you make it print ready is to flatten it first. So we're going to say layer, flatten image. This is before we've sized it correctly. Then we're going to say file, export as a TIFF, or in Photoshop, save as a TIFF. I'm going to put PR in front of it, which is why it's good to use the Chrome browser. It will go to your downloads out of PhotoP. There it is. Then you are going to not save it, <laughs> right? Because I don't want to save a flattened PSD file. Instead, I want to open up this TIFF file I just saved. Which is the exact same quality. TIFF does not lose any quality like a JPEG or a PNG. Okay, now with this, I can go to image, canvas size, make it a nice round number. Basically, I want to build some white space on each side because it's an uneven shape. And now it cuts it cleanly. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the image size and I'm going to make the widest dimension 10 inches. I'm going to uncheck resample when I do this so I don't lose any quality. So I'm going to have an image that's 10 by 7 inches at 700 pixels per inch. Then I'm going to go back to canvas size and I'm going to make it 10 by 8 inches because that's what I need. And then I'm going to flatten it again. Remember, this is my TIFF. So that is how it should look. You want a white border around your image. Otherwise, you don't want to have it touching on two sides but floating on the other two, right? And you don't want to have to crop into an 8 by 10 inside your image. So this is now my print ready TIFF file for assignment one. It's going to print well that way. It goes into downloads. I'm going to replace the original one and then put it into my folder. So now I have options for the three I want to print. And they're all 8x10 by, by at least 300 pixels per inch. They can always be more. They can't be less than 300. But they should all be sized at 8x10. Now, if you forget all of that, which you will, in this folder of flattened TIFF files to print, I also give you a PDF of instructions. It's in Photoshop, but it works for Photo P2 for how you can make them print ready. And that's what we'll be doing on Monday, and we'll start printing on Monday with your logos. Okay, that's it.